Hi, I'm Jamie Lejeune, a documentary cinematographer and colorist based in San Francisco, California. I recently used Color Lab to color grade a feature documentary titled The Bookmakers. And today I'm going to take a, about a five minute section of that documentary and show you how I used Color Lab to both quickly develop a look and then how to apply that consistently through the entire feature. This is the five minute section of the film that I'll be regrading today, displayed in the edit page of DaVinci Resolve. Before I get started, I'd like to show you the trailer for the film so that you can see what the end result looked like. I knew at some point in my life I'd be making books. It's crazy that it's happening right now. There is a lot of talk about the future of the book, and that chorus of the book is dead. So we fight back a little bit. We make them even tougher and meaner than they ever were before, and more of them. It's a really important juncture of time that we're sitting at. Communication is finding its ideal form in which to live. Making a book is extremely hard work. We're the sort of exploited child laborers of our own weird industrial complex. But I'm sort of happy with that. Somehow that book has to contain that whole theatrical experience without anybody there to direct it. I think that there's some truth to the fact that everybody's got one book in them. I love this idea that images, that drawings, that pictures have a life to them, have a spirit. You just have to open your eyes and you discover beautiful things which I put into my head or I collect and after some time they will appear in my books. Before beginning, I always have to check my project to make sure that I have the LUT option in Resolve set to tetrahedral. The Color Up workflow uses LUTs, and I want to make sure that I'm using the highest processing for them. The next step is to media manage my sequence. Typically, I get handed very slow hard drives full of big long files. I want to trim those down to get just the shots that are in the final timeline. In the case of the bookmakers, I did that by transcoding everything to trimmed ProRes 4444 clips. This scene from the bookmakers, like most documentaries, is edited from shots taken on different cameras at different times on different days. So the first thing that I had to do was organize the clips in groups based on when they were shot and on what camera in order to efficiently work on each group of similar source shots as a set. I start by organizing by clip name and time code. But sometimes that isn't enough. For this scene, it won't be enough. So I need to also use Resolve's flag feature to group all of the similar shots. With the shots grouped, I can make a new timeline ordered by the flag groupings, and I name that sequence Color Lab. To enable the grades that I make in the Color Lab timeline to appear in the original film timeline, I use Resolve's remote grade feature. To create my show LUT, I choose a representative shot from the sequence and apply Look Designer 2.0 to a node. Look Designer manages the color from the identified source camera to the chosen output. Before I create the look using this shot, I want to make sure I'm doing that on as neutral an image as possible. So I balance the image first by adding a node before the Look Designer node. In this case, I'll remove the magenta color cast using Offset. In Look Designer, there are options to add a digital negative and also a digital print with many to choose from in each one. For the look I'm setting out to design, because this film is about art, I don't want to distort the color of the art too much, but at the same time, the director and I agreed we didn't want a traditional Rex 709 video look. So I'm gonna choose Kodak Vision 3 stock for the digital negative, and I like how that looks full strength. On top of that, I'll try a print stock. The Fuji Eterna is kinda heavy, but I do like the bluer shadows. So I dial that back until I can still see the effect, but it's not too pushed. And I really like this result. It almost makes me want to go back and regrade the whole show with this new look. Beyond the film stocks, a really cool feature in Look Designer is subtractive color. I wish I could explain the color science behind how it works, but what I can say is I really like the result compared to pushing just standard video saturation. 
Adding subtractive color does add contrast, so I push up the printer lights to compensate. It's a bit of a push and pull between those two controls to get the contrast just right. With the look created, I export it as a 65 point LUT. Now I can open the Color Lab app and import my Resolve timeline directly using the Resolve import command. After the timeline is imported, next I need to tell Color Lab what the source profile is for each of the cameras. I don't have to go clip by clip. Instead, I can use the File Prefix feature to set the profile quickly for a whole set of clips. Next, I add my Show LUT, and Color Lab applies it to every clip in the timeline. And now is where those groups that I made for the Color Lab timeline become really useful. I use Color Lab's Scene Marker to separate each of the groups in the Color Lab timeline. This will allow the AI matching to work much better than simply throwing the whole timeline at it. Instead, it can match within each scene or within each group that I've made. I want to start with the interview shots first, because that's what I used to create my look in the first place. I adjust the first clip of the wide shot interview using the printer lights controls and then set it as the reference image for matching. Then all I have to do is click match scene. So while that processes, uh, I want to let you know that this is all running on a seven year old Mac. The speed is pretty impressive considering that this machine is quite out of date at this point. The AI match is done and it did a pretty good job. But to get a better match, all I need to do is hit return and see the other possible matches for the shot. By using the same B and N keyboard shortcuts that I can use to toggle through clip grade versions in Resolve, I can move through the options here in Color Lab. Now I can move the second interview shot and adjust the match there. Once I've picked one, I can add further adjustments in the printer lights or using lift gamma gain or saturation. And this is how I work, scene by scene through the sequence. In this scene of outdoor walking shots, the AI matching worked quite well, except for one shot that was really clipped. The sky was totally gone. And this is a case where I'll do what I can quickly here with the CDL grade, but ultimately this shot is going to need detailed keying or windows to replace the clipped sky. The whole goal working this way is to get quick matches as efficiently as possible and then move the scenes back to Resolve for much more detailed grading. To do that, I just click Resolve Export. Now Color Lab will warn me to update LUTs back in Resolve, so I'll do that. Once I've done that, I can tell Color Lab to continue with the export back to Resolve. Looking here at the nodes, I can see that Color Lab has created a CDL on node 1 and the show LUT on node 2 for each clip. Since these are remote grades, I can switch back to the original timeline in the edit order and all the grades are there. The great thing about it is that it's not the kind of thing where it's just a black box and it exports and you just can't change it. Since Color Lab is exporting CDL values with the show LUT, it's just normal offset, saturation, and lift gamma gain values on the node, and those can be changed or further refined at any point. Looking here at the light box, you can see that very quickly I was able to apply the show LUT and balance that across the whole sequence. It's a really fast way to get through the first pass on a documentary grade. Working this way allows me to put the time saved into more targeted corrections and creative grading with keys and windows, or to have time to really address shots with problems, like for example that outdoor shot with the clipped sky. So that's Look Designer and Color Lab AI used for a feature documentary. Even with just the beta, it's amazing to see what it can do, and I'm really excited to use it on upcoming projects.